Hello. So today we will learn about the concept of callback chaining that is also known as a callback hell. So let's first understand a little example of our uh, market supply chain system. In our market supply chain system, we know first the product is sold by dealer to retailer and then from retailer to customer. So we can say that there is a transaction that happens from dealer to retailer side and then from retailer to customer side. With this primary knowledge, let's uh, start building our little program. Now suppose the program that we are going to make or the function that we are going to make, we are told by our manager that we have to create a function, we have to write a function with the name let's say transact such that the person who is doing the transaction he can be a dealer or he can be a retailer the person who will do the transaction will first give his title that means if he is a dealer then he will have to write his title his designation designation all in upper cases right only then this transaction will be uh, qualified right only then the dealer will be qualified to perform this transaction if somehow dealer does not give this information this title in all upper cases for example he gave his title as d e a l e r then then that then the dealer should not be qualified for doing this transaction right so this is a kind of function you can say this is a kind of crazy function that we are required to create okay so let's now create this function in javascript so what i am doing i am first writing a function with the name transact and here i am taking a variable title uh, this is the variable where the designation will come and get stored while this function transact will be called so, and the second parameter i am taking here is a uh, variable uh, with the name callback okay so now what I'm doing, I'm going to create a random variable. I will tell you why I'm going to create a random variable. So let's create a random variable. Let uh, random equals to math.floor math.random into 100. Okay. So this expression math.floor then math.random into 100 will return a random number which will be less than 100 and that number will be stored in this variable random variable okay so as a next line i am going to write the logic to check whether the designation or the title that is passed to this variable is all in upper cases or not so how will i check i will use the two uppercase function that is provided in javascript if title dot two uppercase not equals to title right then r let's create this variable let r then r equals to new error so a new error object is created and that is get stored on the e double r variable so new error and let's pass a message for this error block letters not found okay and now what i am doing to give a asynchronous flavor to this function i am using the set timeout method set timeout the set timeout takes uh, first parameter as a callback function as a function and then the second parameter as the time in milliseconds after which this callback function has to be called so let's create a callback function this time i'm using arrow function you can use any other anonymous function the regular anonymous function also and here i am calling this callback right And the second parameter to the set outside timeout function is our random number. Uh, please note that this random number, this random variable uh, that we are passing as a second parameter to the set timeout function actually specifies the timeout value, the time after which this callback function has to be called, right? So this is our uh, definition of transact function. Let's now 
call this transact function. Here I am making a call to this transact function transact and the first parameter that I am passing here is the designation of the person who is uh, performing the transaction let's suppose this is the dealer and the second parameter would be a callback function okay let me remind you the definition of the callback function once again callback function is the function that is uh, passed as a parameter to the main function and that is called at some time back at the body of the main function right so let's write our callback function here R if R then console.log R else console.log let here I write dealer has done transaction I will just keep a uh, note on this uh, closing right parenthesis and closing right uh, closing right curly brace and closing right parenthesis because here first the left parenthesis is there and then the left curly brace is there so here first right curly brace will be there and then right parenthesis is there so this is something that we have to keep in mind while writing callback functions let's let's make let make an, an another call let make an another transact call but this time from the side of the retailer not from the side of dealer retailer and here i'm also changing that he is a retailer okay so this is our function that we were asked to create and here we are making a call to this function right and this is our callback function why this is called our callback function because this is being passed as a parameter to the function and it is later called inside the body of the main function okay so let's just call it call this node callback hell okay so there is the result dealer has done transaction then retailer has done transaction so do you believe that this will be the result each and every time i execute this file callback hell.js yes or no let's check again dealer has done transaction comes first and retailer has done transaction comes first. oh see this the result has changed and again the result has changed so can you uh, tell me the reason why this output is toggling do you have do you know the idea yes you are right this just is because of the set timeout and the randomness that we have provided in our red transit function just to give a flavor of the asynchronousness right so due to this asynchronousness you know this is really really very hard to predict what will be the output but you know in the cases of transactions we uh, we may we may want that this transaction should appear first and then this transaction should happen actually in real life even if you see that if there is no transaction from dealer to retailer then how come a retailer will do a transaction to the customer right so this transaction theoretically should come first and then this transaction should come so how will we achieve this how can we achieve this by using just callback methods the way we are using here it is not possible we have seen that the output is toggling right so just to uh, make it like as we wanted that first the dealers uh, transaction from the dealer side should happen and then the transaction from the retailer side should happen we have to change our code a little right so what are the changes that we are going to do and that we are discussing over here so here i am making a change to this transact method right so here you have seen i have written if error then console.log error else let's put a left curly brace over here else console.log dealer has done transaction and now this whole transact call i will cut from here and will paste here so actually what i am doing what i am doing i am just calling another transact function inside or i am chaining a call to the transact inside the original transact call right so here let's see 
that's indented this is very important indentation and here I am this is for this transect uh, right curly brace and right parenthesis and then there is a right curly brace for else this else ends and then there is a right curly brace and right parenthesis for this transect so this is my code now and I tell you that this is the code that will prevent transactions or our output to toggle right so this is the way we are making a fix to our output right so let's check node callback dealer has done transaction dealer has done transaction first retailer has done transactions second again dealer has done transaction again dealer has done transaction dealer 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 so i think i have checked it sufficient times so we can be assured that this is a code this is the program that is preventing my output from toggling right so what is being happened here actually when the first call to the transact is made and the last statement of this transact function i have written another call to the transact so we can say these both transacts are chained together these both call to the transact are chained together or we can see this is the transact method that is being called and the second parameter to this transact method is a callback method and this callback method is there and at the last of this callback method as a last statement of this callback method i am calling another transact and writing another callback function right so this kind of nesting of one callback function inside another callback function gives rise to a very very common problem in javascript and in fact very deadly uh, problem in javascript which is called callback hell it is this problem is also known as pyramid of doom let first see what is why, why this is called pyramid of doom so if you are able to follow my pointer then you can see this kind of structure makes a design of a dome or a pyramid therefore this is called pyramid of doom this is also called callback hell or such kind of programs that lead to callback hell or this dome like structure are always avoided because they create maintenance issue debugging issues right so what is the solution so that we can avoid writing such kind of programs that lead to callback hell or pyramid of doom the answer is the answer is promise the promises that we have already learned in javascript if you are unaware of promises then you can view my video that i have created on promises that is available on youtube right so in our next lecture we will discuss about promises and how to solve this callback chaining problem using promises thank you